Hey, Bill. Walter Cronkite. Hey, Bill. Say something to your mother on her 90th birthday. She is 90. Her effective age is 80. Listen, you appraiser. <laughs> the actual age. Okay. All right. You want to wish her anything? Otherwise, she's a good shape. See you guys tomorrow. Okay. I want you to say something about we you put on a great feed great feast thank you and uh, this is the uh, 15th of march the Ides of march 1997 and i didn't put on this feast everybody put it on oh, no. everybody <laughs> from morning till night part and parcel from margaret mary everybody came in Aunt Betty, drinks and food and dining and whining. It was a total contribution. Everybody made this. Her party was made by all of her friends. Thank you, all of you, for helping. Thank you for the party. Aunt Betty, Aunt Betty. the matriarch of her family. Okay, we're going to have Betty tell us who she's the matriarch of. <laughs> yes. Well, your your wishes, you know, on this day. I wish to live to see another happy birthday. Good. And yeah, we do too. <laughs> and now one of my mother's best friends over here is right across the street, Mary Monroe. And Mary, you've got to be able to say something about today. And the well, I, in first place, I feel honored to have known all of the Kavanaugh's and every one of them from, uh, from uh, Mary, Mike, and all the rest of them. We just love them all. And uh, I just hope that Mary has another long time. Just many of them. We may do this uh, on the hundredth. Thank you. I may not be around, but I'm going to leave everything to her. <laughs> A <laughs> hundred will be fine. And we have Mary O'Neill, our next door neighbor. Or number 11. Number 11. <laughs> and we'll let you take it from here. Well, what would I say? I'm very glad to have met Mary. She was very happy when I moved in because she said to me, uh, are you a Catholic here? <laughs> and so she said, that, she said, now I can say that she wrote you're one of us. Oh. <laughs> She's you're one of us. Yeah. 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 Thank you. All right. We've had quite a feast. And look at all that food. Coming around to Margaret Mary Donovan. Well, this is very special to see my aunt again. I didn't know if it was going to be possible, but it did. Miracles really do happen. It's wonderful seeing all my cousins. And it's really extraordinary. And it's been many years since I saw some of them. It's wonderful to know how they progressed and developed. And it's especially nice to meet them for her wonderful neighbors. <laughs> okay, yeah. now we have Joni that's been telling us a lot about Magigori and and uh, her trip over there, which is fascinating. And uh, we'll let you go ahead and take it from here on your wishes on her birthday. Thank you. I just want to say very happy birthday to Mary. Mary Ann. She yeah. signs her name in my book. I know. Mary Ann Cavanaugh. The lady who changed her phone number on me. Oh, yeah. I couldn't get in touch with her. Right? She missed my cynical because I couldn't get in touch with her. But uh, she's, she was at my first Seneca in October of 1989 and still going strong. Okay. Every month, except when Tom was here. <laughs> Eight rosaries in one week is plenty. When you were coming up with the ninth, I'm going, wait a minute. 
But I'm very, very pleased to meet everyone here at this gathering, and it's such an important gathering that um, we got to do it again. Okay. Good. Thank you again. Thank you. Okay. Ma, you want anything to say to all these nice people? Do you have anything to say on your 90th birthday? Oh, thank God they all showed up. <laughs> they got to show up. They all showed up and they're nice people and they'll do you a favor any time. They take me to church a lot of them. And uh, I haven't got a car now. I never drove a car in Ireland. They, they weren't driving cars then. <laughs> Ever since they are very, very, very good to me and I can get to church in the and I hope I look to see the day that they will all be as happy to be as I am. Oh, wonderful. Thank you right now. Excellent. Lynn, can I say something to my mother on her 90th birthday? I would like to say congratulations first of all. Still the being here for her 90th birthday. And I guess these are going to have many more times. And Lynn lives right next door to my sister Mira. Good. We're probably going to do this on our. So, 95th is the 100th. There you go. Okay. She's doing great. She gave the baby a And it wasn't around the corner. Are you coming to sit down with us? Are you coming to sit down with us? Or where are you going? If you have a good story, I'm there. I don't know. We got the nice story. Yeah, we got the nice story. Hey, Dorothy. Come on down and wish Mom. What did Walter do? I wonder if she's having the baby. How many kids do you want? Hey, Mom. Are they here? Those are all your girls. Tell me what's happening. I'm in the picture. She's a kid. Wow, look this way. We're all here tonight. Tag team. Oh, what? I'm going to stand here. I'm going to stand here. Oh, excuse me. Smile. Now. Smile. Okay, Dorothy. Say something to mom on her 90th birthday. All I can say is, I love you, Mary. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Are you finished? No, you have finished. What's your name? I didn't say that. <laughs> I wish you the best and good luck and uh, happy days. Well, thank you very much. It's not her birthday, it's yours. Let me tell you this. I'm wishing her back. Good luck because you'll need it. The road is still long, you know, and I'll get it keep well. And keep well, and uh, we'll both live and see it out. Bring me a nice sandwich tomorrow morning. Absolutely. Okay. Okay, folks, this is Dorothy McKinley, our next door neighbor, and her daughter, Cheryl, Cheryl, who is down from Chicago. Chicago. Yeah. Lived in our neighborhood up on, uh, uh, Ber what is it, Berlin? Or? I'm on Dickens now. Dickens. Dickens? And, La and Larrabee. Oh, yeah. yeah. Great neighborhood. Did you know Kelly from Kelly's Bar down there? You know that? No. Uh, just up the street there? Or the glass cuts? I'm going to store in the young I'm just sure. telling you. Yeah. I went to school with Joe Glasscut, but he died. He got asphyxiated or something. Thank you, Tom. In the garage. Thanks. <laughs> so got a nice bar. What are, you th what are you thanking me for? Thanks for the tip. The tip? Yeah, the little news report. Yeah, keep working in your garage and you'll, you'll be meet the same feet. <laughs> Be careful when you're working in the garage. Did you enjoy yourself so I did. Mm -hmm. Are you leaving? I always did some cabin I have said sorry over again since I came down here. I've never known when I was there to kill or a cabin. This is a daughter, of course. This is a You look wonderful in this Dorothy has like a new car, too. <laughs> Tommy did the car, but she doesn't know. Right. Oh, that's great. It's too much. It's great. New paint job. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for inviting me. It was a wonderful oh, thanks time. Thanks for coming. It's always a wonderful time. Are you going? 
Are yeah. you going? Oh, yeah. I thought yeah. I thought you were sitting down. You said no. Look, look. Oh, wait, 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 wait
get over oh. to Murphy. Oh. This is God. And the beads and the prayers and the Our Father are from Mary, Mary Larson. Oh. Wow. Mary, that day is beautiful. Oh, Mary, Mary Larson, Larson oatmeal. Say laps around the beads. And put some bailies on the oatmeal. Open it up, darling. This is all the diary. This is all the diary. Beautiful scarf. To put some bailies. You take it each other. I'll put it on. Oh, no. Tommy, take it. I love it. I said, this is going to be great. Tommy's taking it. That's good. Put it here. Put it here. <laughs> this is from Pat, which is from your, your niece Patricia. Oh, that is pretty. Lovely pin. A St. Patrick's Day hat. A dress pin with the shamrocks around it. That's beautiful. And that's from Patricia. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get the photographers. Yeah. Get all this is from 3M. I hope it works. Where is it? 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 Where is I just, I just, oh, you devil, you. I'm going to get you. Put the camera down. I'm going to get you. A nice, happy face. We're going to show this to the lady in New Jersey. What's that lady's name now? Janet. I just want to show uh, for your gift. This is from Gloria. Smell it. It's the dry fruit. Smell it. Those are citrus. And along with the dried fruit, which is the pulpuri, this is the fruit and the preserves. So you have the whole thing. That's from Gloria. From Gloria. What's Gloria's last name? Uh, yeah. uh, Kathy, what's her name? Um, it looks like Brie Snow or something. Oh, I had a lot of fun there. We saw all play together and uh, jump around the place there and Go take, go and have a ride in, in the horse, oh, the right? pony, and uh, the donkey. Yeah, that horse and the donkey. We huh? had a horse and we had the trap. You know, they call it the trap, and we would ride around and those things. And when I was little, of course. Yeah. We played together lots and. So you grew up with uh, Jack and. We, I, Jack and I, we used to have a great time fooling around. You know, we'd be so we'd be picking the potatoes or doing something, and we'd be playing around there. So your dad was a farmer? My dad was a farmer. He yes. was, uh, he, and he brought up nine children with the, we had carrots growing, we had turnips growing, and potatoes, and they used to go to Innes for, to buy the flour, tea, and sugar. Yeah. And he uh, had raised a couple of pigs, and uh, a lot of sheep, and uh, cows. Yeah. And uh, we see and hens and chickens and turkeys. You had a lot. Even turkeys. You know, turkeys were very delicate to bring up in those days. Yeah. Sounds like you had a lot of fun as a kid growing up then. And you yeah, went, yes. you walked to school or did the, did the bus come so and the school you? was only just a, a jump over the fence, you might say. It was in our land oh. uh, where we went to school. And... Uh, the school is uh, uh, now a cabin because the man next door bought a little bit of land there and took the school over and uh, they built a new uh, public school on the mill road just back a few yards, not yards, a few, uh, maybe a half a mile back the road we'd call it. Okay, I'm going to be talking to you about your mom and dad. Well, where did they come from? My father was born in Caharay, Dara, Innes, County Clare, Ireland. In the same house you were born in? 
the, uh, the same house that I was born in because I remember my grandmother yeah. was his mother. And uh, what and was? I don't remember uh, my grandfather uh, very well because I was too young to remember him. What was his Slightly name? Slightly, I remember him. John, I believe his name was. My father was Thomas. And your mother's name was? My mother's name was Bridget. And what was her mom's name? Oh, I don't remember her, her mom's name at all. I never saw her. Could it have been Margaret? No, no. that's you're thinking about daddy's mother, who yeah. was Margaret. So you didn't know who your grandmother is? I left Ireland when, and in fact, I was my, my grandfather, my mother's, my father's father died when I was very young. I could just barely see him. He had red hair. Oh, a lot of red heads. But I remember that. Oh, yeah. Now, when you came to this country, you came by boat. Yes. When you were what? How old? 15? I came in the, ba in the ba Baltic White Star Line. Do you remember the name of the ship? The ship was the Baltic White Star Line. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh, White Star Line. I see. No, just the Baltic. It was a British liner. Oh. And you had a good berth and so forth. How many days did it take you to cross in those days? I faintly can remember that it was five days. It wasn't too long, I thought. And Maybe I was enjoying the ride. Yeah. Did you uh, go to Ellis Island? I would not go to Ellis Island if I was smart enough for, to answer the call, if you know what I mean. Yeah. My mother and my aunt in White Plains, New York, talked to a priest before I got to Ellis Island and said, would, I, would he mind saying that we were here for, for me to pick her up? But when they uh, packed us all in some place there, we were all in a big hall, and there was a lot of foreigners. There were a lot of Jewish people and a lot of long-haired people, you know, with long hair. <laughs> they, looked, they looked strange to me, and the first color fellow that I ever saw was in uh, Ellis Island. But I wound up in Ellis Island because when he called my name, Mary Ann Condon, I was supposed to say, here I am, or something. And uh, I heard the voice, and everybody was packed in in their seats and everything, a big, big hall. And I said to myself, how could that be me, Mary Ann Condon, with all these people besides me? But I was too shy for to say, here I am. So you <laughs> stayed there an extra day, huh? So for that, they kept me o overnight, and uh, we, we, I remember they showed us some nice pictures, you know, to enjoy well, before we went to sleep, of course. And uh, the next day, they, they called, uh, all those people that were called individually, they, in they got up and they got home. But I was left behind because there was no priest or nobody else calling me for me that day because my aunt and my uncle went home to White Plains. Disappointed, they didn't have me. What was their names? Oh, Mr. and Mrs. John O'Brien, Westchester County, White Plains, New York. Are there any of them people still alive? Uh, funny thing, but all her children, which she had five, are gone. And I enjoyed Catherine, with Catherine here in Florida when I came down here to buy a place. And uh, Catherine and I used to go out together and her husband and enjoy our time when we had time together. Yeah, when you got to White Plains, finally. When I got to White Plains, it was in the evening and uh, there was some people in to see me from Ireland. I was considered a greenhorn, of course. You know what a greenhorn is? Yeah. So anyway, the first thing they gave me was ice cream. And I thought the ice cream was delicious, but it was too cold. It was <laughs> very cold. It was the first time I eat ice cream. You'd never believe that. And the store, of course, she was selling ice cream too, you know. So, uh, so they had a store there in White Plains? They had a store there where they sold ice cream, candy, tea, sugar, and they had in the back great big hall of a, of a room, which 
that in those days it was the speakeasy days they called it and that they were selling booze, liquor of all kinds. Once in a while she'd say to me, would you like a little bit of wine, Mary, or a little bit of, uh, then she'd make up a nice little drink for me because I used to help her out in the store. Yeah. So, anyway, from there, the, oh, and the first time that I saw a colored man was just before they were coming to get me, for, to take me to Westchester County, and, and uh, do you know what I did to him? I was kind of worried about my mother at home. So what I did was, to, to, they, they asked us to go up to this man who was colored and give him your money and tell him to send it home to your parents if you don't want it. And I said, I don't want it because I'm getting the, they feed you so well on this board of ship that you didn't need anything. You had drinks and you had food of all kinds. I, in fact, I enjoyed my... Uh, How do you know he sent the money? Yeah, well, because uh, he told me to stand alongside him and tell him exactly who you're going to send it to. And we were told to go up to this man if you don't want your money anymore, <laughs> and if you don't need it on board the ship, because I thought, oh, it would be better for me to give it to my mother and father rather than go to America where they're going to have loads of money. You know what I mean? Be, it will be falling off the trees, I suppose, we thought, you know. In those days, we thought the money fell right off the trees. So anyway, I wasn't sorry I sent it home to her. That was all right. But they came and got me, and I had a wonderful time and went to school. They were, they were told that they had to, of course, she, was, she knew all about this. They had to send me to school until I was uh, 18, maybe, or so. And then I went in and took up nursing, and they asked me what I would like to do. And I took up nursing in uh, White Plains, New York. No, I had to go to New York to get into a hospital to train for the baby nurses. And so it was on, let me see if I can remember it. It was on uh, the west side of New York, oh, ch Children, Children and Infants Hospital. That's where I trained for the babies anyway. Well, when you left Ireland, did they give you a good send-off? The night before I left Ireland, my mother had a party ready for me and surprised me. And uh, my, my, some of my brothers were so little, they were sleeping in the beds. I could see them sleeping in the beds and they never knew I was leaving. But my sister that died there in May last on the 7th, she was up and looking at me was kind of felt bad that I was leaving. If she was with me, she'd feel better, I suppose, but she was looking at me. But anyway, my father got the little uh, horse and the car ready for to take me there to Ennis, where, I le where my brother left for uh, Limerick, and then on to Cork Cove, and then into a big ship called Baltic White Star Line. But the night before I left, my father sung a couple of good songs. I can hardly remember them, and I was a and hardly able to hardly able to remember them. But I did over the years, and I still can sing one of them. Give me one. Give me a tune. Sing one of them. Go ahead. Our ship is ready to bear away. Come, come, reds o'er the stormy sea, and her snow-white wings they are unfurled, and soon shall swim in a watery world. So do not forget, love, and do not grieve. My heart is true and can't deceive. My heart and hand I'll give to thee, so farewell, my love, and remember me. A vocais veil whence lovers meet, near to the scores and an accent sweet, to fair Delgeny likewise thee glen, the darker waters fall on them. The lovely scene surrounding brave Shall be my thoughts when far away 
But my own dear Nora's heart will break When a fond farewell of love I take But when I reach the land that's free Pray for old Ireland and remember me and So at night, you guys sort of uh, didn't have any TV to watch, so you sang around and sang songs? We played the accordions and we played the violin, you know, and we sung songs. If what one would know, the other one would beat the other fellow to it to see if his song was better than ours. And we, they used to congregate, the neighbors used to congregate into the home to enjoy whatever enjoyment we were carrying on with. They would t chime in and be enjoying the fireplace. And sometimes they used to put down the tea and have uh, as good a feed as could the, the men of the house who could afford and put on the table and we'd all be eating and drinking and if you wanted a glass of wine or something or there'd be something in the house for to take care of you. Your lads what and was lasses, that? Nothing. Our ship, was it our ship is ready? Yeah, you're already saying that. All right. Let's see what the other one is. Uh, I think it's ready. I got to get the start of the very beginning of it. You sing the national anthem very well. Yes, yeah, give me a chance to this one now. Lads and lassies, as you pass us here, these words I have to say, saying how the people of Ireland in thousands are sailing off to America. Oh yes, they're going to a foreign nation, for in their own place they cannot stand. And when they put their foot on board, they say they're bound for a Yankee land. Then hooray for the gallant sons of Ireland, and her fair daughters that's going away. Oh yes, they're going to a foreign nation, for in their own place they cannot stand. And when they put their foot on board, they say they're bound for a Yankee land. And the night before they are for leaving all the neighbors in Neutron for all to take a farewell cruise scheme and often far to sing a song. The mother she commences weeping when the children are going out the door. The father looks all round the cabin, and when he think he is alone, certainly his heart is breaking, his sad tears would melt the stone. Hearts and cars are drawn ready for to take them to the train. They kiss shook hands in sorrow then parted, and tears are falling down like the rain. But when they land in New York or Boston, their friends will meet them with a cheer, saying you're welcome here from Petty's land. Our house is getting along this year. Of course, I soon can tell them the great distress that I have seen. Any man that is not married, the devil a wife he'll get next year. For it's the best, I'm sure, that's parting to seek their fortunes now far away. For a wreck and cruel landlords that sent us all across the sea. Oh, wilt thou ever more return 
to a home they left behind, for it's many a thought in a foreign nation certainly runs in their mind. Oh yes, across we will come o'er to poor Erin, to young queen, when we will have plenty to support us in our own dear Isle of Green. That was terrific. I'm about out of film, too. That's it. Well, that is refreshing. I think some of these songs have never been heard before and probably, you know, will be recorded. Well, uh, you know, what you should do now is, is take care of that one that you have because I'll tell you why. I'm getting too old for to remember them. <laughs> there is some in between, you know, skipping a line, you know. Yeah. So, maybe you missed a line, but what the heck. But that's what I mean, that I'm afraid... The Fury Brothers can put it together again. Who's that? Or oh, anyway... One of those great new, uh, you know, Irish... You keep, you keep the, uh, this one because it came to me natural. Another time I'd be poking at it. Yeah. Well, I'm going to see if I can get another tape and we'll talk about uh, other things, you know. Let's see how much of this without taping it. I'm on the last second, so I think maybe we'll just oh. kind of end it here and see how much tape I've got. Hold on. Why don't you take a picture of the... I'm going to ask you that now. How do you want to be remembered? As being a, a, a good, honest person that took care of her children, and I even beat up a woman over there for... One of my kids said, I never did that, I never did that. But sure enough, he did that, and that was Tom himself. What else do you want to be remembered for? And I used to say, don't ever do that again, Tommy, and Tommy wouldn't tell me for days afterwards. So he was the one that did it. Oh, uh, be darned. That was me. Yeah. Now, what else would you want to be remembered as? I would be remembered Hello. for bringing my, my sister from England, and she made out here with her three children. And I took care of my father and mother in Ireland and sent them every time I had a job. I went and sent it back to the old country and helped her to bring up the rest of the children and send them to school. And I had a job here.
the grace and peace of God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, be with you all. And also with you. Good afternoon. My dear friends, it's with great joy to be to this St. Paul's Assembly. With this exchange of the vows of the sacrament of matrimony, your mother, my own, Let us pause now and ask that God to charge them the choice of blessings that they begin their very life to sacrament.
Holy Spirit.
who's getting married next, Maggie? <laughs> uh, you are now on the air, Radio Aaron, and MDC and CBS Chicago is watching. What have you got to say? Chicago. There's a cold front coming through here tonight. It sure is. The, the day of the wedding here. And it's going to be 47 degrees tonight. But Michael warm us up. you got to drink a lot of antifreeze tonight. It's a good Irish pachin, you know. Okay. Let's hear from let's let's hear from the two of you now. What do you want us to say? What'd you think of the wedding? I thought it was beautiful. And he looked so nice. He did, did he? Michael looked very nice. And so and so did your mother. Yeah, she did. Yeah. And they did a nice job with their mother. <laughs> they yeah. did another good job. Yeah. With them. We did a number on mom, huh? It's nice to be able to see six children here. <laughs> Everyone was here. Thank God it wasn't, you know, for any other reason. Any one of them. Just the Huh? It's dark in here, yeah. yeah it, it won't call good in the dark. Let me trust your voice. You're under arrest. Really? Please do not try to escape. Tell me about Frank. Hey, read, read us our rights. Tell me about Frank Kelly. Frank Kelly? Frank Kelly. Sergeant Frank Kelly. Sergeant Frank Kelly. From the Chicago Police Department. Eight years ago. Great guy. Does he would he recognize you if this picture turns out? I better get fifty bucks to you. You should go to the light over there. You should take go over there in the light. Turn off the T V somebody with this thing. I gotta get this I gotta get this down. Frank Kelly, wait, just go into the light. Do not wait. Just go into the light. Stay where you are in the uh, Algin or Oxford area. Right you left the Phoenix. Yeah, when they fry them, you you're going to get lost in the superstition mountain, and your brain is. No way. I'm going to be fully fit after three no years. No worse than somebody's eating barbecue. You better have a big swimming pool, of Frank Kelly. No, <laughs> and you think you don't know me, do you? I remember bringing that to you. You do know me. We gotta get you in the light, right, Frank, Get in the light, please. Maggie, can bring that light over here? That's right. We're gonna hear from our sailing champion of the world. You must then know the sea <laughs> and know that you know it, but not forget that it was made to be sailed over. Joshua Slope. Who said that? Joshua Slope. Is this a, a, a training course that we gotta go through here now? He's the first guy to sail around the world single-handed. I will also Very tell you. Is your uh, services uh, at um, available to our Arizonans? If they're up on the lakes and they want to learn how to survive, yes. On a 410 or what's smaller than a 410? 420 is smaller. Yeah. What's a 410? 410. That's what it says on my T-shirt, Gibbs Zen. 470? That's a 470. Oh, not a 410? You gotta make your little... Seven bigger? Yeah, seven bigger. It's a 470. All right, back to school. Back. Ones and sevens. <laughs> Ones and sevens. We finally sold that 470. Did you? Yeah. You know that's. Are you going back to the Olympics? Uh, 2000. The I should live so long. Australia. And you've already gone over there and checked it out? Oh, yeah, we're there. And you know, over. how many women already do you know over there? Three. Yeah? Huh? We don't need no stinking women. <laughs> right. What? That's a mystery. Who said what? <laughs> stinking women? Excuse me? <laughs> Get your hand out of there. It's a white <laughs> God. What? It's supposed to be stinking badges. We don't need no stinking badges. Badges? We don't need no stinking badges. And we know See, it was a misquote from a movie. It was supposed to be a joke. I don't really mean that. What what is is I need to read those stinking badges. What is it Listen. I never heard my name talk like this. I'm sorry. <laughs> 
They have to be well, now we got Steven Spielberg's crew has just came aboard, well, and Kathy is directing right. by fingers. No, go this way, go that way. No, I know you better right. than to even try to attempt to tell him what to do. Who, oh, this one? No, this one. Me? No, th the this other mic. The, the other mic? Then. Who's that? Music by Marvin. This is Colangelo's new right hand man coming down to Arizona to take over the D-backs. Hey, don't tell anybody. I really think The Chicago Cubs Where now have... This is the Mafia. Yeah, here, right here. This guy. Take the tape out. I don't trust this guy. They're like poor Michelle. I'm just providing the lighting support guy. Here we are. Too many cooks spoil the broth? Listen. There's always somebody else just taking it all in. Yeah, right. What All right. Look at him. He loves it. Make some signs on the wall. You ask Go him. ahead. We turn that camera we know on the you. <laughs> he loves it. He's German. He's German. Put it on your brother. I don't no. want it. German. He needs it. Come here. He needs, German. He needs to record it. He's nuts. Out. He's forever, yeah. forever getting us stuff. It affects the German. Very German. German. Hey. He's nuts. He's That's very why I bought it. Look at it. That's why. He loves it. Who's in the middle there? I like it. You take the print. Oh, wait a minute. You gotta put it on, Mom. The Queen Mother Mary. Oh, wait a minute. Actually, I know. I was cold. You were cold. All right. Oh, my God. No, I I was cold from the oh, beginning. Oh yeah. Oh, there you go. Uh oh. I did it in the film camera business. Oh, I'm not going to lie. control. Yeah. What do you got to say, Ma? You just throw them over the bed. What would you think of that wedding last night? Tell them what you think of the wedding last night. Was it nice? Beautiful. Wonderful. <coughs> did you like the song? I enjoyed the songs, yes, and the dancing and the whole thing. Well, we yeah. got the yeah. a little Peter song. <laughs> Peter Song. Oh, sure. Yeah. And a girl from Claire. All right, every, everybody quiet now. Quiet. All right, Maggie's got to really kind of calm down here while she gives a testimony here. All right, what was the best thing about that wedding last night that you liked, Ma? The chickens and the hens. <laughs> and, <laughs> and your son got married. And my son got married. Arranged for the, the wedding last night, which was wonderful. Just quit leading the subject, She's Maggie. She's a beautiful girl. <coughs> That's you. Got a very nice boy in Michael. <laughs> she did. The fourth Mrs. Cavanaugh, all right? We need one more Mrs. Cavanaugh. Then we can I think we're going to have Billy next. Yes. I also. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Billy will be next. That's the only way we're going to get the fifth. You know what? I was, I was looking, I was looking at, at Michael's mother-in-law. Yeah. She, she's available. She is? And she has money. She has money? Yeah. You and your asshole camera. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, I gotta edit out everything that you say. I got Ma, watch out, I got Ma. He's got edit tweet. We got you. He's got erase it. The evidence? Howard Stern, listen. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, he All right, Ma, right? the next question. <laughs> the next question. He loves this. I think that's you, they were. You, you would have been the greatest. <laughs> if it's my guess. <laughs> the next question, Ma. Ma. What is the secret of long life? <laughs> fast cars. I mean, did you drink a lot of booze? Did you not drink no, a lot? I enjoyed <laughs> the wine that was served, and the food was excellent. Yes. And uh, they want to know if you drank for uh, your long life. Oh. What, what has brought you to 89 no, years on no, this I earth? Never did a little bit. Indulge, a little bit. I never indulged in it. Mother, let me ask you this. As a middle... A nice regular picture of me. Now, don't you think this, Ma... Let me ask you this question. How did you meet <laughs> Mr. Kavanaugh? She'd be like... Well, I already got that on tape. I heard for a grandpa because he was trying to make it. Ma, what do you think this generation... This family of yours, all the kids that are here tonight listening, ought to do with your cottage in Ireland. Should we buy it? My cottage in Ireland is um, not ours anymore. Well, we should. We can pay for whoever's got it, and you know, have them rubbed out or whatever we got to do to get it. You know, what is it? Why are you interested in the little cottage in Ireland? Keep it up in our name, you know, the common name. Hmm? No, you not enjoy the body that owns it. Passes away. You're the owner. No. Lena. 
How big is it? More no, than an acre? I'm not. Well, it was 40 acres once, wasn't it? Was. that's alive over there now is Lena Hundley. Oh, Lena's, and Lena. She, and she has a nice little... She sold 39.8 of it. Gone. She has a nice... So, Grandma, how did you and Grandpa meet? I heard it was over beer, making beer for a party. No, I've got that on tape. I'm going to show you that that's tonight. A big fake. That's a very good question. See, Michael, I young Michael wants time. to know, and I, I'd like to, you, just you on, on his uncle. It was my birthday. Yeah. It was my birthday party. That's all right. Well, Say it. Tell me. But to make the, uh, well, there are a the drink yeah, for the night, you know, I'm in the beer. In those days, it was bootleg stuff. Oh, you were making bootleg beer? No, yeah. not me now. Okay, who was? But well, Daddy was. Okay. Grandpa <laughs> were making beer, you know what I mean, themselves. Did you like him immediately when you saw him? And he was able to make the beer. <laughs> Grandpa made bootleg beer for that's your birthday right. party. That's what I'm talking about here. Yeah. Like, like, but this is during Prohibition. Yeah. And yeah. he was in the store at that time. Yeah. 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 What did you see? Mom. So he was able to make it. Was it a good party? Yeah. Yeah. Was, it a good party? Yeah. was it a nice party? Yeah. Yeah. It was a wonderful party. Yeah. All right, Ma, do you remember who was yeah. at that she party? Just say she didn't know. Was it the party? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we met over bootleg beer. Oh, but you see, it was a She didn't say it was the beer. Yeah, and and uh, uh, his friend uh, could it. make the other part of it. Was it or something that they made with? Pops, barley water, and uh. Yes, yeah. There was three things. I see that she's a crack. Yes, thank you. But anyway, they made it. Was there anybody like famous, like uh, we'll say, Kid Twist, uh, Torellis, or uh, Bugsy Siegel? No, everybody would have known each other. Do you meet any you know, semi-famous guys that wanted to share or didn't? No. No, she only knew other Christian people. Oh, he wants to take a okay. I know, I don't know what he's best driving best at, but... Uh, no, there were some incredible people no, doing the, the same part. thing. No, 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 you didn't meet? No, no. Hello. So you and Daddy, when you met... We did not meet that night, I was my birthday, and we had a party. All right, let me ask you this. Your first date, what did he say? What was your first date with Dad? I don't remember now. Well, they should get us. How could I remember that then? Did it, was it a happening? Was it a... There was nothing happening at all, because no. I, was, I was fixing the kind of Who initiated the first kiss? I was fixing the three the myself. Who kissed who? In the brain. I was fixing the Hey, Dermot. Who kissed who first, Grandma? Hey, Dermot. Dermot, uh, park it, Maggie, just for a second. Dermot, what's your earliest recollection? No. Well, someone had a kiss. What's, what's, what's Dermot's earliest recollection in New York City? Do you remember one time two policemen <laughs> taking you and I into custody for picking up cigarette butts? No, we were sitting oh my at, goodness. We had to be sitting on a curb down at the battery. <laughs> and he asked me to behind us. We were arsonists. You two guys you and I. We were looking down a little <laughs> man that was on the edge of the curb. So he said, are you guys lost or anything like that? We just went hard. He shrugged our shoulders. Yeah. He said, come with me. Took us over, marched us back up. We were back up on our apartment and everything else, and Mother accepted us and so, so. You can never become President of the United States, German. Right, we were just lost. He never inhaled. You know, you've got some of, you got parts of that right. You know what it was, the real story? Here comes the real, the real story. This is Mike Cavanaugh, the real story. After 56 years. Now, who goes behind his head? Remember those iron fire engines we had? Yes. Yeah. When we inadvertently dumped them out the window? Yes, and hit one guy in the head. No, it didn't hit anybody. No, we're safely, the policeman came up with them. Yeah. And he says, you guys recognize her, Mrs. Kavanaugh, but who these fire engines belong to? It was Oak and Ladder and everything was attached on. He said, don't belong to us, you know. Okay, this... Them off the ledge, and they went down 10 floors right on a... Well, you know what? They hit the awning on the flower shop down below. You know, if you take that... Oh, now... No, wait, 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 wait. Here comes the story on the policeman bringing us home. You have to take the camera on yourself the real story. Now... The real, the real story. 
Remember, it's Remember the cigarette butts. His bed is a shield. Wait a minute. I'm just going to, I'm going to titillate your mind. I'm just going to titillate your mind. He had a chain hanging on his belt. He had a chain hanging on his belt. He didn't have any handcuffs in those days. You're right. He had a thing that they would whip off their belts. The come, come alongs. They were called come alongs. Yeah. You wouldn't even know they had them on. Now, we went around 92nd Street, up to Broadway, up to 93rd, back down, I mean Columbus Avenue, back down to Broadway. We circled the whole block. Picking up cigarette butts and putting them in a three pound coffee can. Do you remember what we did with those? I know. I'm sure. What do you know about it? You went to the bank. She's right. Listen to this. She's absolutely right. Because this story really happened. I'm the family historian. I know everything. We went to a bank, which was on the corner of 93rd and Broadway, and we deposited in the night deposit box. <laughs> All the cigarettes. <laughs> I don't know. And we, How old were you? You, 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 you couldn't have been more than eight. <laughs> three or four and five, maybe. I was younger than you, I know that. Four and five. Three, uh, three and five. <laughs> now, we put it in. Long. I was a goal. <laughs> I'm trying we, to nationalize. No, wait a minute. <laughs> we put all of the cigarette butts, which were probably about. A hundred still smoking. Then we poured them into the night deposit box, thinking that was the proper place. Wait a minute, to dispose of them. What? Now, of course, the bank caught fire in the night deposit section. All their checks. Now I know how we got. All their money started burning. It's a true story. As we walked away, this guy cannot make this up. This some people true. did see us, this is coming from the heart. and we did not know that we were doing wrong. We were doing a cleanup job. <laughs> and of course, <laughs> well, he took us into custody again and held us while the fire department fought the blaze. Now, a lot of money probably burned up. Who go? Who knows what? But anyway, they took us home and asked us what we were doing and. So like forth. But you're right, Mary Louise. I don't know how you knew that story. I know, no, she put your head up. You put, you, put your head up there. No, you guys all forget say. what you've told me. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was it. That's no. what I can tell back. Do you remember that, Ma? I can tell you not. I well, don't that, that clearly <laughs> happened. Keep the thing I cannot on. do that, my uh, Billy. children would never do anything no, like here's that. What happened. Good kids. Here's what happened one time with Dermot and I, and he caught us. Say I'm a little younger than Dermot, and he caught us. And I was going. We were fooling around matches in the alley, you know. There was an old building, and we threw it into an ash can. That was by Tommy Elcott. Tommy Elcott's house yeah. went up. Next to Roy Miller's house. The whole thing went up. So I'm standing next to Dermot. I was with Wait a minute, and Dermot's, and Dermot's going like this. Okay. Saw so many fire That's a like son that. of a bitch of a place. And you're to our left. You're not supposed to talk about that. No. That thing is, we, we, and we, I went, we made a back to And you that. looked at us like this. Tommy, you went. But you see, Jerry, you got to No, no, no. Listen. Tommy <laughs> knew that we did it. What broke it? He says. He has her mouth shut, though. We're in a house. You son of a gun. Her mouth you guys did it. And I said, I didn't do it. Damn it, did it. <laughs> <laughs> and Jerry went. I'm going to kill you. I went out on a date this You the remember alley. that? There was a big engine in the back. My heart was... And I had to really fake it because I said to one of the firemen... And he let us go. She said, I've never seen a really a fire engine close up. You know, he says... <laughs> oh, my God. I said, how come you never oh, ring those no. bells? You know, there was a bell on the front of the fire engine. Oh, my Lord. And the guy was... He didn't know he I didn't set know the fire. We did, you know. You know. But this, this, you know, usually, if you ever investigated fires in the city, this is what you have to look forward to. The guy that set the fire always returns to the scene. <laughs> Something about you know setting matches and everything else, and we were back at the scene. You know, I hear the fireman. This is like keeps us going. 
This is a, don't ever show this film. <laughs> he was 16. We, I was 13. I, I was about 30 year clause. 10. <laughs> he was about. You know, we were very young. Usually, I fought us, though. Usually, us. when a big player starts, they know it's so I mean, You always go over and, you know, and look around and proud. All the arson investigators say, there's the guy with the big glow in his eye. You get him. Take him over. Yeah, I set the fire. I come over to all this commotion. Look at the leader. Well, me and him, he went, he hightailed it. No, but I said to the fireman, I said, how much, I, how much does it cost to get that bill? It was my first rat job. He, he didn't know that we were the guys that set the fire, and he says, no, every time we ring that bill, it costs us in Chicago a hundred bucks. I said, a hundred dollars? But he caught us. He caught us, because he was like this. No, no. I'm like this. We this guy's up. like this, and I'm going. We set the fire. I'm up. looking at Dermot going. Yeah, and Tommy. Tommy goes like that. this. Tommy goes. Get the hell of a place. And he looks to the left. He's more smoke at You little pricks. You did it. No. I said, he did it. He made me. And Dermot's going. I'm going to kill you. And Tommy said. You little asshole. Look at Dermot. Listen. Was always so this good. is the. Uh, I swear to God, I went. Dermot. I don't. I don't want to ride on you, you know. <laughs> there was kind of, I'm going to kill you. We well, kept our mouth shut up. But he caught us because he was going like this. He's going, I wonder how this oh, guy started. No, we never then, got caught. No, I'll never forget your face because you went. We never got caught in that caper. No, he looked. Caper? He had us cold turkey. I'm going to kill yeah. both of you. Guys. There's a lot of accuracy to this story. He was 16 years uh, of age. Mr. Alcott was a fireman. I know, he was his own house. He knew it, it was of us. The knew. house behind. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Alcott was right in the walkway. Yeah. In the walkway. Yeah. Right up yeah. up the okay. Oh, man. All we did was throw up all our mansions. Watch out. It didn't start the fire. <laughs> I think the second one was on the roof. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the front <laughs> Keep pushing. <laughs> Dermot, your mother is. Dermot needs to go to the bathroom. He's going to start a fire. It's going to be on the front page in the morning. Oh, oh, the oh boy, i got to turn this one off and give the camera a rest. Wasn't <laughs> oh, that funny that the two of you all yeah. got there? It's independent of each other, right? <coughs> Where did you sleep in there? I don't remember. I got Mrs. Mullen. <laughs> well, you know what? I don't remember for good reason. Who's your mama? There's no conditions to remember. It's just like, that's how I miss getting back to the What else do we do that was mischievous? Is it too much that? already? Huh? Save some for next year. <laughs> <laughs> we already let out a couple of You know what we did? It's good thing the statue a little bit. Quiet, quiet, no, 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 no. quiet. No. No. There was worried that we're going to see retirement. We threw ice balls <laughs> at the trolley. The the Remember? We threw ice balls. That's we went, no, wait a minute. minute. That's nothing. Wait, tell me out. Listen to me. We went like this. You dumb son of a bitch. And the guy went, yeah. And he got out of the trolley and we're running down the alley. It was like out of Butch Cassidy and some man. I went, German, these guys are really good. This guy didn't give up. I went, holy shit. Yeah, we had more stamina than Oh, we man. I said, no, he went. I could hear him. I said, if he catches me, I am goosed. You know, driver. you. Did you, you yeah, love remember that? your kid tell you story? No, oh, my God. Like him, no. This guy says, I am going to kill these two guys, you know. We figure these ice funny. balls would really cool them down. I yeah. like cool them I like Actually, isn't it that they all took after their mother? And then she beat up some woman? She went over and talked to... And she said, no, he didn't. And he lied to her and said, no, he didn't do it. And then he she, he suddenly has this thing and tells her the truth. And she was, I guess... He had a fight with the lady and everything. Remember when Tommy painted mm. the lady's mailbox? Oh, yeah. And he confessed uh -huh. to you that he really it did. It is adult no, hair. No, he did yes. not confess to me that he did. She thought he was yes. innocent. Innocent. Yes. I fought for him because I thought he was innocent. Yeah, they also arrested so him. So you can get mixed up all right with the, with your children. You know? They lie, yes. And, you know, I asked they him afterwards when he grew up, 
why did you lie to me? He said, I was afraid you were beating the dickens out of me. So she beats up a neighbor lady, gets arrested, this and taken to the jailhouse. And you were taken, taken to the jailhouse, Chris? Yeah. Oh, she had yeah. 25 hours to I was no time taken to no jailhouse. Yeah, they took, you out, they took you over to Hudson Avenue Police Station. No, they did not. And the wagon guys were sitting there. We're sitting on the front porch. You got no. After you sacked Mrs. McGuire, no. and they said, come on down. No, that's a different neighborhood. No. no. It goes on we live. That was no. Mrs. Benner. Mrs. Benner. No, it was Mrs. McGuire. No, Benner. You're wrong. Whatever it was, McGuire is getting a lot better with you. Benner. 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 To call me like yeah. The new policeman says for about 20 minutes coaching me out of the way. Will you listen to the way they tell a story here? So really why don't, don't you tell the, the, the story the right the way, the way it happened? Oh, you tell it. It'll be it'll be the wrong way. I stuck up for for my kid and of course if I knew that Tommy did, I Kill say him. I'm very sorry to her. Yeah. But you know, she said something about the Irish. If she didn't say that, uh -huh. I oh. shocked my shocked my goal, you she know what I mean? She said a bad thing. Uh -huh. and, and oh. It was so bad is that I gave her a little push. And you give a person a push, they give you another one back, don't they? Uh -huh. So I tried, you know, to... So uh, I got two pushes now. Yeah. And uh, I let her go. And I, 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 I hung up the clothes that I was doing already. Which comes to show. So is this, I went in. Is this the Benner case? Is this, uh -huh. the, is this the Benner case? Wait a minute. I wasn't. Yeah. This is the whole story. There was no one another. Right. We're 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 getting people against truth. Canada. So Listen. Can we get into the story. When I went into the to the house, you know, uh -huh. I just forgot all about it. I figured out that's that. You know what I mean? And Tommy, I thought was uh, already right, wouldn't do a thing like that. Paint somebody's mailbox. Mm -hmm. you know? So, uh, in a few minutes, the officer uh, rang my bell, mm -hmm. and and he said, uh, "You, Mrs. Kevin?" I says, "Yes." And he says, "We'll have to." He gave me a certain date for to be in the, down at the courthouse or whatever it was. There, you know. Hudson Avenue. Not Hudson Avenue, I guess. By Dermot knows. But anyway. Um, <coughs> The Democrats. Will you check the records? Not sure. I think some of those folks around there were Democrats or something. And they took care of the whole thing and they said, we'll take care of Benner. The Benner was the name of the woman. But who was the kid that helped you with, so, with, with the laundry? The so, hang it. Wait till I finish my story. Go ahead. So, I remember. The day came. Oh, the guy. That's all right. Whatever day came, uh, Billy, I can defend myself anything. There's nothing No, I was the one that helped you with but the anyway, laundry. When I. Uh, and the lunch was I over saw with the an knockout hour. Oh, let, let her finish. Will you wait a minute, okay. for heaven's sake? Well, with anyway, the uh, with the I, shot. they told me when I would have uh, the time to go to the place, you know, where they were hearing, you know, this day in court. Yeah. So uh, Daddy said, I'll take care of that. I think it was my husband. He said, we'll see one of the glass houses or one of the politicians, you know. So the politician says, you he take was, care of that good. dinner. Yeah, you take care of dinner. So he said all that and did that and everything. And so I defended myself. And she was in court all right, all dressed up, and so was I. She had and, a fun. Yeah. yeah. He just squashed the whole thing in a few minutes, and she went home. Who was the woman next door? Remember the woman next door? Mrs. Guire next door. You know who the alderman was, Mom, in that neighborhood? It was Patty Bowler. Patty Bowler. Oh, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And what she got was a peace bond. Yeah. Right. That's we exactly what it was. Yeah. Say that again. So we, no arrest, just peace bond. Peace bond. Right. Peace bond. If one of you get together with Mrs. Mc, Mrs. Benner and you get together with her, the first guy is going to be a... Be a uh, Let me ask you this. Contempt of court. Not only you, Mother, but Tommy and Irma. 
What was the foundation Next case. in the basement? What was the foundation in the basement? This German. I don't know he's talking about. Which out? On Whelan. We're talking Whelan. Third. Tommy. Did you and Liz Tommy. Did her ever get together again? What was, was it? Assistant? Oh. She, you know, then I don't, I don't remember. It was dirt. She made up for money. Steven Spielberg. She gave me one way or another. Wait a minute, Tony. So in the evening, you know, we all dirt. congregated the neighbors, you know, like, yeah. like Mrs. McGuire and uh, the little Italian lady that used to give us the wine mugs. Oh, yeah. Cut and the Tory. No. Yeah. Cut and the Tory. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Uncle Tommy, what did Grandma just do to you? She took Nancy with the cane in the back of the backside. <laughs> and what was that for? For painting that lady's nose on her shelf? For all of the above. I did it. All these lies I'm trying to And all the things he never did just to yet. Is that true, Mary? Maybe more to come. Look at my wife's face on it. She's enjoying the hell out of it. Ask him now about the lady upstairs who taught him all about sex. My what about the lady the hell out of it. Yeah. Why don't you know about your sex education yeah. with Mrs. Abbott when you were 15? What was your name? I have no idea. You're going now. Yeah. Oh, you. Good night. <laughs> a very nice time. Oh, yeah. It was nice for us all to be together. She didn't teach you very well. Yes, it was. But you better go to confession oh, about all these <laughs> things. <laughs> What is this? You better go to confession and confess. Father Bryce, we did a little uh, fire job. I hope Father Bryce never hears this thing. You want to hear a funny story? So on one hand you're saying go to confession, the other hand you're saying I don't want Father Bryce to know this. What do you mean? Oh, 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 oh,
the other day. She likes her fan. And uh, I'm shutting the door behind me. And this is the, uh, the living room. Looking back toward the door that goes outside. Way back there is the kitchen and the dining room and two favorite chairs. And there's my mom taking a look at uh, one of the holy magazines. Place is loaded with them. I mean, you could become a priest or a nun without ever going to the seminary. All you got to do is come here, and my mother will make you a priest. <laughs> This is the Blessed Mother. It is. And looking at some of the paintings on the wall, there's a famous Kavanaugh, done many, many years ago, back in 1983. I kind of liked it myself, so I gave it to my mom. And there's the uh, picture of my wife on there, on the front. But. Uh, one of these days, maybe I'll do a reprint of that. <clears throat> yeah, I better turn on another light. That one is out over here, Tommy. When all the lights are out. Another picture there of family. Coming up here is uh, my grandfather, the police officer. Have to back up there a little bit. That's my dad's dad. And uh, he was a uh, Royal Irish Constabulary. There's a picture of Mary in the background. Anyway, and this is one of Angelo's beautiful uh, works of art, the chandelier of course, and of course heading out the front door and into the kitchen. All right, so you've got pretty much where my mom does her baking of the Irish bread. All right, gets a little better to look at the kitchen this way. <laughs> okay, ceiling of lights and all. And then sort of, oh, there's the Pope. This is his visit to Chicago. Now looking back toward my mom. Okay, get an idea what her place is all about. Of course, this is my mom's bedroom. I better, uh, yeah, I don't think I better zoom in. The bathroom. But this all leads around to the side here to uh, Mom's bathroom is in that, in that part of the woods there. Okay. All right. This is the uh, other bedroom. Nice tidy bed that I make every day. <laughs> so much for that. It's wet down here. Why don't you stop and I'll go ahead of you. I'll go ahead of you. All right? Stop there. Just hold on to the rail. Okay, we're looking now at where mom lives. And there she is. And of course, that's her door up there. And uh, this is the neighborhood. This is the street. It's one of the ladies that goes to church in the morning. Across the street. Mary Monroe's car. And if I turn anymore, I'll be facing into the sun. It's seven something in the morning, heading for church. This is the front of St. Paul's Church. Got a new statue. Great bells. Long way up. Church hall. Rectory. Panning back. Michael's car. Mom. Say hello, Mom. Say hello. There. Say more than that. Okay. 
Okay, and the lady caught up with us that's coming over here. Anyway, that's Frank McDonough Park out there. We had a little girl that was struck by lightning out there. That's where you see that tree with the two pink streamers. I don't know if I can zero in on that or not. But uh, the little girl is in a coma and uh, hit her in the uh, stomach or abdomen and blew out both of her ankles and uh, it just happened uh, hardly a cloud in the sky, one cloud and then there was a burst of lightning. Anyway, Frank McDonough Park, is, Frank is still alive and is a good friend of mine. We're going to, uh, all right, now we're just uh, in the midst of filming the kids at Oak Park High School. River Forest, Oak Park River Forest. River Forest, all right. And we'll try and zoom in a little closer. August the 24th. Those are some big dudes out there, weighing on the ground. Don't know who's who, but somewhere out here is Dominic. Hopefully he'll know himself when he sees the tape. <laughs> Where are you, Dominic? <laughs> Just like duck walking. Only worse, you're crawling on all fours. All right. Come down. All right. All right. Now we're back to the center of the field here. I don't know who is who. They all look alike. Except ours are supposed to be just practicing, so we know that they're over here. These guys are practicing. Are they? Yeah. Okay. This is, uh... I have a feeling that we're looking at them right here. I think these are the big boys, the varsity. speech that he gave this morning uh, at your rally or the indoctrination for the parents, wasn't it? He's a good speaker. What did you get out of all of that? Uh, he basically does that every day to us. He preaches to us and uh, uh, tells us the importance of safety and all that. That's about it. Safety first? Safety first. Family second? No. School third? Drinking and carousing for it. <laughs> he doesn't go for that. No. He really is a straight laced guy. Now, it sounds like he was a product of that school. Mm hmm. So I'm not sure if he is. Where did he play? Uh, did he play pro ball or? No, I don't. I think he played college ball. So, what's your goals with this team right now? Uh, right now, we're just thinking about winning. Yeah, next year? 
for you, you're going to be there next year. Yeah, next year. You'll be on the first team for sure, much bigger than you are. And right. You play what? Tackle. You're going to be the quarterback player. next year, you think? Quarterback? <laughs> sure. <laughs> We're running fullback. Do they test, do they uh, time you when you do run? Yeah, they time us in the 40 and all of that. So how do you do on the 40? On the 40, I got a 5-2. That's pretty good, huh? Yeah, that's not too bad. And uh, you're going to work to get that down, huh? Mm-hmm. So, uh, what do you practice every night uh, in the morning or? In the mornings and then in the afternoons. So before you even come home, you've already uh, expanded a lot of energy. Yeah. You drink a lot of water? Mm-hmm. Anybody pass out out there yet from the heat? No, I almost did a couple times, yeah. but nobody Humi- else. Yeah, though, is it because of the humidity? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I noticed that you have that here. It's not exactly a dry heat like in Arizona. Okay. Well, it sounds like you got a good school. Well integrated, everybody pulls together. God, I've never seen so many people that are uh, assisting beside the coaches. I mean, you got doctors and chiropractors. And <laughs> what else? I mean, these guys really take care of you. Who pays for all that? Uh, the school. We got a, what's it called? Booster Club. Yeah. So everybody, our parents put in money for it and they help fund the football. Like my mother today bought a yeah, I swear about that. Oak Park football kit. And that's gonna help pay for some of this stuff. And uh, that, w- that way the doctor, in other words, if you got hurt, it wouldn't cost you anything, would it? Well, it depends on what kind of hurts you get. Yeah. <laughs> if you get like a twisted ankle, no. But if you break your leg, I'm sure. You're you covered by some sort of school insurance, sure, huh? Sure. Yeah, and that lady that spoke today right after the head coach, who was she? Uh, yeah. She was the athletic director. Oh, is that right? So she's over him. Right. She uh, looks after every, every team the whole way. Okay. She was giving us a, quite a talk about some girl that had cancer. Mm-hmm. I don't know anything about that, but... That was an interesting story, I though. I suppose they keep, they keep that quiet, yeah. <clears throat> How do you think you're going to do this year? No, now you know. You really think so? Yeah. Who's your biggest competition? Uh, I think that'd be York. No, that's our last game of the season. So you'd be watching the papers for them. Mm-hmm. Will you go to any of their games? Uh, the coaches will to scout them out. Why think. wouldn't you go? I don't think we'd go. But if you're not playing on that same night, right? Wouldn't yeah. it be kind of no- nice to know who's on the other side of the fence sure. when you're playing? Sure. <laughs> okay. Well, is there anything you want to say to uh, relatives, friends, your mom, for Hi. coming? coming to this event today? Certainly all the parents were not there today, were they? Oh, no. Well, a lot of them just came to see the, the scrimmage. Me too. And then once the scrimmage, they heard the scrimmage wasn't going to happen, they just kind of went home. What was going on? They had a big barbecue pit started over yeah. there. They didn't invite me for to eat. You could have had some. It was for everybody. <laughs> Is that right? Did you have a hamburger? Play- yeah, the football players got two because nobody else can. So football players could get two hamburgers. Well, see, they never mentioned that at the uh, the rally, did they? Yeah. It's because they didn't want to. It would be more for them then. <laughs> <laughs> OK. All right. Uh, Let's uh, end this uh, conversation with a, a school fight song. What's your school fight song? I got no clothes. I you know, like, oh, Notre Dame, you know, da, 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 da. Yeah. You don't have any of that stuff? The cheerleaders don't? I'm sure we do, but I don't know. You don't know what it is? No. Well, you have to learn that right away. That's your school fights. I suppose it's important. Get on that. Okay. Goodbye, everybody. Say that goodbye, everybody. Bye, everybody. It's cool.
just a few feet away. And this is Margaret Mary's place. Yeah. Okay. The back end. Yeah. Okay. And of course, there's Margaret Mary. Oh, yeah. And we I think it's going to be a very unusual winter because the squirrels are going crazy, digging holes and burying their nuts. So something's going to happen this winter. We know not what. But we, but whatever it is, we'll blame it on. We'll have squirrels. a blizzard. <laughs> yeah. Now this is your your earthquake-resistant apartment complex to the rear, uh -huh. and we're going up to 11 floors. Now let's see, you're in the third floor. Yeah, the, it's the fourth floor there. Fourth floor, and the third one in from the right. Yeah, it, you know, the, the two chairs and the table in the center with the plant, the circular plant. You want me to zero in on Can it? Do that? One, two, three, four, okay. I <laughs> see it. We're right in on top of it. Can okay. you get Mr. Squirrel there? Where is he? Right here, turn, turn around there. He's looking at you there. Hey, squirrel. Tom, look at them all going over here. Well, you got a lovely place here, Margaret Mary. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, this is nice. It's a real nice place to be. Yeah. Uh, well, we're going to go, where are we heading now? Well, uh, I want to show you my cemetery. Your last yeah. resting place. It's a mission place. I want to show you my re resting place. I have a headstone and everything. All you have to do is put the ashes in the pot and <laughs> stick them in there. <laughs> You're not going to get cremated. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cremated. Go on. Yeah. This oh. is earthquake country. I don't want anybody sliding down the mountainside. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right, Margaret. Okay. See you later. Okay, bye. Into the car and we'll go over there to see it. Well, gang, here we are at Margaret Mary Cemetery. And uh, there's Maggie and Margaret Mary and her final resting place in case we ever have trouble finding it again. Um, we'll start walking down the path to where she's at. Wait a minute. I don't even know if I had this thing on. Wait a minute. Father and Mother Murphy. Let's see, look at this one, Martin Bell. Which one? Martindale, born in County Mayo, Ireland, January 16th, 1805, died October 23rd, 1890. Wow. This is an old area. He must have had some bucks, this guy. All right. Yeah. I'm coming back to where you're at, Margaret Mary. This is it. I don't know if I was doing it right or not. It's about uh, uh, 12 by 12, so the ashes goes in there. And uh, she has her friends, of course, you know, on both sides. But uh, she's with the Murphys. And I'm going to put my size clip out there just to show you that I know where it's at. Okay, and there's another Murphy. All right, Bernard Murphy. And another Murphy over here. Okay. That's the car we came in on. This is first for me, going around a cemetery, figuring out where people are going to be. Here, I'm standing right on top of Margaret Mary's, and she'll probably be standing over mine long before anything of her goes into that ground. That's for sure. Darn sure. More Donovans? More Donovans. Wild Bill Donovan? Just think, Margaret, uh, uh, Maggie, your 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 space on top of mine is just going to be one foot by one foot. I'm going to be uh, six foot five by five foot five. This is my extra space. We're looking at it upside down. 
so I can get uh, a bearing on where I'm at in case I ever have to come back here. That's where it's at. I like in here, but they're reading all the gravestones. Oh well. So much for all of this. We're going to crank it off right here. That's a nice pose, so you can get it. And make him look up straight. Oh, here comes the other one. Now you gotta say something, Mom. You gotta say hello to everybody back home. Oh. Tell them what you think of the picture of the baby. Oh, back there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the baby is beautiful. So now Gorgeous have, and smart. Yes, so we have two babies here now that we are looking at to one after another. Ian Andrew and w Andrew Raffaele. Yes, and uh, William's little baby. Two little cousins yes. coming together. And they both look healthy and well. So I hope the Two baby sweet little second is going cousins. to have good luck. And, uh, Kavanaugh, Kavanaugh. They're beautiful. They're beautiful. So now, Jimmy, you'll have to take good care of that little baby. He will. And don't let him fall down. The stairs. <laughs> He's got a cute Auntie Laura. Auntie yeah. Laura will help him out with those babies. Did, did but only let one come now. Did Helena see the baby yet? No. Uh huh. I don't think so. That I know of. I see. So. There, he pushed the box away. <laughs> All we're getting is your. Yeah. That's okay, you might not be getting a good picture. Are you there. cooking something, Michael, or what are we doing? We're just what? putting away the groceries. Yeah. And we're getting ready the food. Just tell them. We're doing it in uh, sort getting, of... Uh, the beer iced up for you, Tom. Methodically. Well, that's very thoughtful of you. I got two for you to choose from. One is an Irish beer that uh, they never heard of in Ireland. It's called Killian's Red. I love it. Yes. It's a nice it's red... Out. Nice red beer. It's delicious. The other one is from Pennsylvania. It's made from spring water. It's called Rolling Rock. Really? I love it. It's ice rolling cold. Rock. It's light. It's my delicious. favorite. I love Rolling Rock. And you'll love it. Yeah, Michael, have you seen the uh, pictures of the uh, new baby? Pardon? Have you seen the tape of the new baby? Ian. The tape of the new baby? No. No. Oh, well, we'll you, show it to you tomorrow. You're going okay. to see it. You're going to see it now. I'm t uh, isn't it? I did. It's gorgeous. Well, you didn't bring it with you, did you? I did. I have a beer in the refrigerator. Tom. No. No, I didn't. Oh. Or did you bring the Irish film with you? No, I didn't bring them either. Oh, Tommy. Oh, we're not going to show them. What's the matter with you? We're going to have dinner tonight. We're going to show them over at our yeah, house tomorrow. I'm here watching movies. Oh. Nuts. Those are great Irish tapes, though, aren't they? It's a wonderful they? Irish uh, picture of Ireland. Kind of keeps you from having to go back there. I like it. Okay. You know, I haven't seen that much of Ireland because I left the country when I was young, and all I did was see around the neighborhood, really. But I saw that picture, and it's beautiful. It is. Ireland. Okay. Can you say that again? It's about time someone else would be filming around here. I'm filming all the time myself. <laughs> I'm only in about 1% of all the films. That's true. So, now, so my older brother now can do it. Well, you know, somebody's got to be the star, and somebody's got to be the director, and somebody's well, got to be the producer. Well, I want to be the star now. And who said we'd never be in the movies? <laughs> Hollywood. Oh. <laughs> oh, we I made can't it. hold this. Time. Uh -huh. We're in the movies. I can't yeah. hold this. Movies. I never thought I'd be in the glory. movies. Well, this is the 15 minutes of uh, famous glory. Uh, glory. Yeah. We'd, be, we'd be famous. Well, is there anything you want to show us on your bookshelf there? Well, um, it's a yeah. picture of me and Gorbachev uh, I like very much. Very dear friend of mine. Gorbachev. And he gave me this Soviet general's cap. Here. Say. Okay, here's and, a gift uh, for you. Here's me and Ronald Reagan. 
Oh, yeah. We were on a key west together. And he's I might have to zoom in on that. Oh. Hold that again. Okay. Here we go. I got you look like Dracula there. He looks terrific, though, oh, Reagan. shave. I just got off a boat, and he said hi to me, and uh, he's an interesting fellow. Okay. Here you go. Oh. Open your present. Yeah, from Mary. Can I get the hand Have an hors d'oeuvre. This is the first time I'm, uh, mm. like, in the movie. You deserve both of them. One is first place and the other second place. Yeah, These look awfully familiar. <laughs> I think she cleaned them up really for you. Mary, is... Only Mary can do this. I they gave these as a gift to Mary the other day, tarnished. Yeah. And she gave them back to me. This is called a frugal gift. Is it? Mary shined up my own gift to her and gave it back to me. The it silver is, challenge. It is no, true. I did. I polished them for him because I knew he would love them. Here, so Mary knows all the secrets, I'm telling you. Look at how beautiful they are. Yeah. He gives them to me black. I gave them to her, and I said, what Double are you going to do, melt them down? <laughs> no, I polished them for As soon as I get home, I'm melting them down. Good no. for 50 cents. So your boat is right out in the back here, Mike? Come out here before this is it right here. I can have you to pick The one on the left. The one on the left? Yeah. Wow. Here, Mom, lean forward. What is it? I'm going to put this under your butt. Oh. Oh, yeah, that's that nice so little thing, a, yeah. This is a little Hummer from Mother's Back. That's a vibrator. I bought oh, yeah, vibrators for all the girls that work for me in my that office. So and nice. they you thank the hell out of me. Did they really? They really yeah. I, bought them all so I bet their backs feel a lot better. Yeah, their backs feel much better and uh, <laughs> just, you know. Careful. And their birdies <laughs> feel even All right, now we're looking at Mom inside of the building. And we're panning down to his back porch. I think we want to get a wide angle lens on this thing. More of the back porch. And we're just going to pan down to his dock and his boat. Slip number 89. And here's his boat. We're going to look up at his mast. Whoa, way up there. I'm impressed. I've been out on this boat. She's very seaworthy. Galley, downstairs, bedrooms all over the place. What a neat place. This is the rest of the docks. The rest of the townhomes. This is their lifestyle down here in Florida. Now we're looking toward the east. And that is Michael's dad. And he jumps all over everybody. And the cats. Well, one cat anyway. Whoops. I think I am recording. Let me get this. Now yeah, we're cooking. Okay, Bob, you gotta say something for the people back in Arizona. Now that you've left Tempe and made South Florida your home. What would you like me to say? <laughs> this is hell of a lot more fun than Canyon Lake. <laughs> <laughs> I agree there. <laughs> Now, who are we racing out there? Let's see, we're On the trying to... 50 foot cutter over there. Where is he? He's on the horizon there somewhere. Anybody in front of us? Can you see Bob? Yeah, we're clear. Okay. Oh, there he is. We're going to so you can see. Sure. Show them that... um, the waves here, Tom, that we're surfing on. trying to keep this thing straight with the horizon so that my viewers won't get sick. <laughs> Some of these waves that are coming up alongside are nice big swells. And they want to roll you over. But this is a very worthy boat. And we don't have that problem. Let's see what our instruments are saying. We're going 
going north. Doing about six knots, and with the Gulf Stream going to the north, an extra two, or we're doing about eight two. Yeah, let's take a look at the coastline. See what we have out there. Good old South Florida. Probably looking at uh, Pompano, Lighthouse Point, Fort Lauderdale back that way. Kind of hard to hold down here. Want to roll? Okay. Even keel again. You can see by these waves that are passing by us here that uh, we're in some pretty good seas. Oh. <laughs> okay. I should be steering, but Michael's trying to do it. Brother Mike? Yep. So flying without instruments. I'm keeping it. Yeah. Well, hello. Red light flashing at me. Hey, Bob, how you doing? I'm doing just fine. Doing just fine. Got a little Killian's Red. Very this good. This makes the day go just right. Could I be picked up for drunk driving out here at sea with this uh, Killian's Red? <laughs> this no. is evidence somebody's going to see this in my house and say, that's Calvin I. He's the no good. He's behind the wheel and he's drinking again. And here we are on a rough day with 40 knot winds and seas about 10, 12 feet. Tom, he's only his second time at the wheel, <laughs> and he's having a beer. It's Irish beer. It's okay. Oh, it's God. It's exempt. If it was regular beer, it would be a different story. But, you know, we've got to give credit to what comes out of that. Yeah. Get some pictures of your hard work and first mate. We aren't here. exactly beating that boat yet. They're keeping abreast of us. No, I think they're pulling away from us. They're pulling away from us? He's got three sails up. I wonder. Oh, what happened to this mate? He's got two jibs in the mate. Oh, Lord. There's one of us, our seamen. He's had it. He's down below. He's going to see this one right out. Yep, I'm taking in the sick bag. Okay, there's a lighthouse up there. And uh, we'll see if Tony can safely deliver us. Well. They're pretty focused in right now, it's fairly... Oh, let's see here, we got this control here. Oh, yes, we got a little zoom action here. My God, this thing is... You can see right in there. There's the coast of Florida, Lighthouse Point. There's Pompano Pier. There's my brother Bill in his little condo. We're supposed to be there at 3 o'clock. What time is it? There's Billy's condo. Let's see, which one is it? coming right into the inlet. Hey, this is a very nice zoom lens here. Let's zoom in on this boat over here. Now there's our competition. Wow. That's a cutter rig. Well, he's Look. listing, so... He's course. really listing, so... He thinks that we're like racing, you know what I mean? If I was going to race, I'd beat him hands down, but... We'll let him win today. Okay, enough of that Killian's red. We gotta get serious about this race. We really gotta aim this. Is this the Nina, the Maria? This is the Sia. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you don't have a fade button? It's up in the front on the right side. You're making everybody sick looking for it. Did you find it? Might as well forget it. I gotta hunt it down. You okay. Yeah, I think he's got one I can't hold that. No, you, missed, you missed one right there. Yeah, it's good. Can't hold it. She's breaking up. Oh my God. That's why I'd rather have a, a power boat going up and down the inland waterway. I want this sailing shit going all Yeah, you know what we're looking at? We're looking at which one? A girl in the back being nude? 
Why are we doing this? Uh, <laughs> okay. If you were closer, you'd know why. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've got to got to back off here and get real. All right, Bob. <laughs> Turn. <laughs> oh, hey there. I think I better put this thing back on green automatic. I'm not sure if I'm getting a good picture or not. But there's the lighthouse. Would be trying to uh, the sail down so it doesn't slot while trying to come in. The engine fails, Bob. We can bail off with that, that sail. We can make a turn and use the safety feature. It's like a second engine. Did you catch that boat? Put some throttle on this thing? What? Did you catch that boat? Put some throttle on this thing? <laughs> you want to see more of those girls? Girl! Yeah. Those girls are not going to go into the harbor like they were out here. Uh, what a beautiful lighthouse. Uh, uh, I mean, Hard to hold anything steady <laughs> when you're in <laughs> rolling seas. Uh, the entire boat is naked over the <laughs> Which boat is naked? <laughs> what size? Yell starboard or port. <laughs> <laughs> got the big just gonna come he's, he's burning out the zoo motor on that thing. <laughs> okay. Here's another one to port. We're coming in. Here's another one to port. Another one? He's pouring the coals to it. No, no, go aboard the port. Go aboard the port. Go aboard the stern. To your right, dummy. Would you move the camera to the right? All right. being in heavy seas, tossing, and turning the way we're doing. Oh, I'm about to throw up that good Killian's beer. <laughs> Anybody up there say hello? The guy behind you on this little uh, skidoo, Tom, off the rear. Devil. Hey, real dear devil. There's the blimp way up top. Everybody's, everybody's trying to get into the act here. I mean, even. Gear blimp is right above us, Sonny. Uh, we're coming into the inlet now. And, uh, excuse me. Well, the Some people the going out. Pompano Beach screwed up. And, uh, Some people of coming in. Dredging contract as they're supposed to every couple of years. It slipped by them and it wasn't renewed. There's a dredge. So they had to take a referendum of all the larger by the sea. Pompano, Deerfield, everybody that uses this inlet to see if they want to vote. That's the dredge. Instead of having an automatic renewal. Uh, so you'd probably have, get a better look at it if I did this. Okay. Everybody voted 80 what, a, what an experience. For it, even though it meant $10 a person. And we're coming into the inlet. Yeah, we're very happy about that. Otherwise, this inlet would be closed because the dredging keeps the Oops. silt, the silt in. I'm trying to get some great pictures with Michael. They're suing that law firm for overstepping it. Oh, what are they doing there on the beach? That nice girl. Oh, look at that. I got to come back around when I heard that. Right on the beach, see that? She just put her top on. That one right there. Where? <laughs> In the water. In the water. 
thought he was giving her mouth to mouth resuscitation. <laughs> Are you talking about the pelicans? <laughs> yeah, you see that girl there? She just put her top on. Hey, the bridge is going up. Hey, representative. The bridge is going up. You're right. That is perfect timing. Some sailboats coming out. And he's got the right of way, actually. It's kind of crowded in here. Well, it's, it's worse than this in January, February, every year. Yokohama Harbor, with all our torpedoes intact. Hillsboro Inlet, right down Point, Inlet. Florida. Land of sunshine, Isle of Venice, America. Every home on the water. Now I understand why Bob moved from Mesa or Tempe to get Florida. Run over by naughty girl, if you don't teach. Naughty Bob girl? On this Is that the ones with the girls? that were with, without tops on and all that just a few minutes ago. And they're right behind us. Again. Naughty girl. You're right. That's the naughty girl. Okay, folks. Perform. All right, police. Coastal, but you don't need the where there are beautiful uh, homes and, and uh, waterways, and uh, millionaires of Florida but you don't need to live down the, here uh, and enjoy the seeing people like us drift by asking for handouts or whatever from these very rich folks. property that Michael uh, tried to buy on the corner here for 275000 and lost the bid by 10000 It's got a nice seawall on it too, you know. Yeah. They tore the house down and kept the pool. You see the little ladder for the pool? They kept the ladder for the pool? <laughs> you see the little silver ladder? The pool was right up in the front by the triangle. Is this the same house that was there? Tommy, you're looking at a house now. Look at the vacant lot to the left. It's yeah. The vacant lot. Oh. That's what was for 275. Uh, okay. They got the framing now for the foundation. Uh, it's documented by name. Uh, the name of the boat, where you live, hailing port, size of the boat. Hey, hello. Okay, 
stand around and uh, where you see dolphins rubbing hard up against me. Sort of help there, huh? Without losing the finger of them. I made a dock. Wind's on your nose. Huh? Now the wind's out of the east. You see right over here? Those flags are screwed up. Here, take a look at those. The wind is on my tip. True. Trying to come into this slip. Everybody's nervous. Michael says, "Don't even talk to me." He's, we got the wind at our tail. It's like landing an airplane the wrong way. Uh, but we seem to be doing very nicely. That's the engines being goosed and re-goosed. And Michael has left the helm. They're tying down all the proper ropes. What's the uh, proper configuration on this rope, Michael? Uh, that one goes over to the other side. Look through your window, Virginia, Billy. This, day this is a motion picture camera. You got to say something to the world because you are now. The union's monitor had steam. You got to say something. I want to show you what Mickey Mantle, my hero, Mickey Mantle. There it is in slow motion. That was the made him famous. There's all kinds of electronic stuff here in this room. He has got. He's got an electronic mom. Idea of an ironclad is an ironclad is equal to. We're getting probably low on something here because they're anyway. Now this is Dermot's boat, and there's Jeannie, and my mother, and this is the back of Dermot's uh, condo, Dermot's and Jeannie's, he's on the end unit, upstairs, that's where we uh, hung our hat last night. And that camera. Yeah. I said we do not have a VCR. He has one in the camera. A VCR? In the camera. Built in.
Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm only... We are now recording, and we are in Margaret Mary Donovan's apartment in Santa Clara, California. And there is the star of our show, Margaret Mary. I'm just going to go over here to the left and sit down. Don't miss our first time ever. This is my first cousin who lives out here, and um, we haven't seen her in a long time. In fact, yesterday we had dinner with my brother Dermot, and she hadn't seen Dermot in... 26 years, at least. Wasn't that something? Yeah, Kathy was just, they just got Kathy. Yeah. And our Uncle Joe had passed away, and we were there for the funeral. Uh, I said, no, I didn't make the funeral, but my mother did, and I drove back to Chicago and picked her up. That's right. That was my only trip to Chicago in all these years. <laughs> well... You know, we've made a few trips back there, Margaret Mary, and boy, I tell you, that place has changed. You can't believe the, whoops, okay. the, you can't believe the freeways that are there. Yeah, I don't know if I'd enjoy it or not. <laughs> you would. Yeah. It's all the same. It's really not bad at all. You can get around a lot quicker, you know, and uh, Helena, she's a whiz on them freeways, yeah, and so but, is Dermot. But I was a whiz on those streetcars and buses, too. And for only 50 cents all yeah. over the city. No longer, boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell us about Santa Clara and what you're doing down here. Well, let me see. Uh, we moved here and uh, we left Phoenix in 1969. And uh, I came out here to teach school in uh, one of the schools in San Jose. And Mother thought it was a good idea. So uh, we came in 69, got an apartment. And I taught school on the east side of uh, San Jose at St. John Vianney's Parish. And I did that for about uh, three years and decided that I didn't want to teach anymore and I needed another career. Yeah. So, um, so uh, I uh, took a year off and I studied shorthand and typing and decided I wanted to be a secretary. So you worked for the government? I worked, yes, yeah, so and after a year, you know, I, I, I guess it was in 72 or 73, and jobs were kind of hard to get out at that at that time, or it was for somebody who was, you know, like 46 years old and had no office experience, uh, so I, uh, the only job I could get was a civil service job up in San Francisco, so I worked for the Corps of Engineers for about two years, and that filled out my resume a little bit, so I came back after the two years, I came uh, back to uh, to uh, Santa Clara and was able to get a job in this area and uh, worked for another 15 years before I retired in 1992. Mm. So I've been retired. It'll be five years in March. Yeah. So. so you have a nice lifestyle here. It's a nice retirement community. Uh, this building is 11 stories tall. That's right. We have, uh, we have probably about 120 residents and it's usually it's sort of for low-income people but we don't feel like low-income people here it, it's a, a very nice this is high very class. convenient uh we get good service we're safe uh it's well regulated and uh we can come and go as we please and uh i feel very fortunate and and you're charged according to what you're able to pay uh, which is still plenty for a one-room apartment, but... <laughs> I think this is it for you, huh, Margaret? I think it is. I think when I leave this place, it'll be feet first. Oh, <laughs> well, that'll be a long time from yeah. now. Kavanaugh's and the Donovans all had long lives, didn't they? That's right. It's Except for easy. those of us that abuse ourselves <laughs> with the barley, huh? <laughs> That's right. We can make it to 100. This generation <laughs> is going to. <laughs> well, let me um, uh, go back again in time and and uh, talk about your uh, association with going to Ireland and uh, coming coming out here. You were in Ireland twice, weren't you? Once as a five-year-old, was it? Uh, well, no, I was two years old. Two years old. Mother took us in 1930. She wanted mm. to go back to see her parents in, in uh, Bally Castle, and uh, Daddy was on the, on the fire department. And uh, so we, we sailed in 1930 from New York. Daddy took us down. And we were gone six months. We spent Whoa. six months, months in Ireland, I guess. You came back with an accent then. Yeah, we came back, you know. <laughs> I mean, was it, you know, Daddy came to meet us at the dock, you know, and 
Who? Oh, you only were with your mother. My mother. Yeah, Dad. Dad had to stay home. He was a fireman. Oh, I so see. He, he had six, to work. So he was six months uh, with uh, without the family. Yeah. And uh, when we arrived there in, in in New York City, he he took the time off and came to meet the boat. And uh, mother said, uh, you know, to 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 both Billy and I, that uh, Billy, now there's your uh, Eric out here. Yeah. She said, oh, here's your, here's your father. And he said, is that me, father? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, he had a he had a rogue and out here, and it didn't take them long to get reacquainted. We had wonderful pictures, wonderful pictures to show from yeah. that trip. Which is and you, you made another trip here in the last few years. Well, I, I went in 1983, and yeah. then I get a, went again in 1988. Uh, uh, and then I took another trip in 1990. You liked so going I mean, back. Yeah, it, it was nice. And I've seen enough of Ireland now. I, yeah. I, you know, I, I get the idea. I loved it. I loved every minute. It's like my mother. She doesn't need to go back to Ireland anymore, especially after going to that Irish fesh up in Milwaukee. Yeah. She was saturated with 11 stages, I think, were going on at the same time. <laughs> 80,000 people. She says, I've had enough of Ireland. Yeah, it gets for to one life. year, for a lifetime, yeah. she says, after being here. That was great. It was a great day, though. Yeah. Well, this is going back to Florida, so you're going to be uh, saying hello to Mary now. Oh, hello, Mary. Oh, dear. I really miss you, and I think about you all the time. I think of all the good times we had, you know, we shared. And out oh, here, I'd love to see you again. I would just hope that we can, we can manage it somehow. When she heard that Dermot and I were coming up here, she says, I want to fly up there, and I just, oh, it cost you a fortune in the last yeah, minute, you know. Yeah, but that's it here. She spent the summer in Falmouth. Yeah. That's where you ought to go visit her sometime oh, gosh. when she's up in uh, uh, Cape Cod. Yeah. That's the place. She knows oh, more people that are into yachting and all that stuff. There's a lot of neat things going on up there, especially the 4th of July. Yeah, that's, that's really, uh, that really sounds... <coughs> You're leading a wonderful life up there. Yeah. So that and then Florida is the other alternative. Get out of the place yeah. in the winter okay. where it's uh, too hot like Arizona. And I love on. California. I, you know, I can't imagine ever living any place other than California. I think it was a good choice, earthquakes and all. <laughs> we have a marvelous climate here. Lots of people, but a wonderful climate. Well, young Mike and Debbie are uh, also down there, so... Uh, They'll be seeing this, no doubt. They just got married. And we hope to see you in California. They're gonna. Oh, they travel around. They like to go so skiing, and you never know when they go up to tell you ride, or they might just stop in, come by here. That's, that, great. that's just like it. Drop, just hop over. You know, I forgot to mention about Mary's uh, son, uh, Michael. Oh, He's yeah. in Alexandria right now, after just the Olympics that just finished here a short while ago. And he just missed the bronze for the girls' uh, sailing team, you know, as their coach. And uh, he's now coaching the um, uh, Egyptian Empire's uh, uh, y yachting team. Oh. Male and female, both, I guess. That should be wonderful. So that he's having a grand wonderful. time over there. a grand time getting an education. I'm sure he's getting well paid for it. Yeah. And I expect to see him in the new wheels before too many years have passed. Yeah. <laughs> He's done real, real well. You know, yeah. of course, William is still a tennis pro or near tennis pro yeah. up in uh, upper New York. Wonderful. So our kids are doing good, and um, we're looking forward to uh, hearing the word that Debbie's pregnant any day now, you know, of course. <laughs> and then well, Jimmy, my son, he, he's, they're expecting another baby again oh, so yeah, that, that now there you can see a happy family there that i enjoy i really enjoy those wedding pictures i thought <coughs> extraordinary just yeah. extraordinary what a way to tie the knot yeah <laughs> that was great all all with everybody present that was very sweet very sweet we baby. spent a nice day yesterday with Dermot and Jeannie. yes yes that oh i never thought i never thought that could happen that was wonderful it was just it, I'm still flabbergasted. I'm just still speechless about it. Yeah. I can't believe it all took place. That was wonderful. Yeah. And having you and Maggie down here was especially nice. Yeah, we're going home today, so that's why we thought we'd yeah. just spend a little more time with you before and it all comes that. to an end. And I'm very, very grateful. You know, I knew you went out of the way to do this, and it's one of the nicest things that anybody ever did for me, and I don't know how to thank you enough for it. For what? 
coming up. Coming here and visiting me and oh, <laughs> doing all these wonderful things. We had a good time though. Oh, okay. Saw sailing yesterday, a real sa uh, sailing race. Yes, you would all have enjoyed it. Yeah, they did the turns right by oh. where we were at. Yeah. That was where? That was in San... Uh, that was down in the Embarcadero, down at Pier 39, I think. Yeah, 39, 41, along there. Pretty close to where Dermot and Jeannie yes. stayed. Yes, They were probably getting on the airplane by then, And though. you'd all enjoy San Francisco. It's a fun place to be and really enjoy that. And if yeah. you want to go, come down south to where all its farmers are, uh, it's a little bit warmer, not as exciting, but quite charming. <laughs> yeah, Goss and Garrett is on uh, the radio, 99.7, that's our niece. Yeah. And she doesn't even know about you yet, but I'm going to have to write and tell her so she can <laughs> mention you on the air one oh, of these but, days. <laughs> yeah, that's Play your favorite uh, middle 50s or 60s rock. Wonderful. Oh, I would enjoy that. I would stick to the radio night and day to hear that. <laughs> Well, is there anything you want to say to my mom or I anybody? I just want to say, you know, I, mean, I think about you all the time, and uh, it, I hope we can all get together and see each other again. And I love the visit that I had. It's really very special to me. And I hope we can see each other again, and goodbye and good luck. And okay. <laughs> all right. Okay. Thanks, Margaret Mary. And we're going to play this back now and see if we want to keep yeah, okay. or do a replay. <laughs> I don't think I can oh, do that Oh, that's a nice place. <laughs> Here we go. We're still looking around. Just the last of the tape as we're closing her out. Okay. And then we're up how many stories? Three stories? This is four stories. Four stories. Okay. All right. How do I shut this thing down? Here we go. Bye-bye, Margaret Mary. Bye. You want to wait for me? Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. No, no, you don't want to wait for me. work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway. I'm not coming. I was told the accident. I need to move. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Really? You can do a lot of them. You know, he didn't really look in the intro. Oh, what the hell is this? Oh. What's the sense of me? Tell me about him. Boy, everybody clams up, huh? Yeah. Because you got the real little red light going. You got the red light on. <laughs> I don't want to see myself on TV. Well, I watched the Cardinal game the other night. And I want to tell you, they pulled that sucker out in the ninth inning. Six to five. And I, I knew they were going to do it. And Sosa hit two for Oh, the St. Louis Cardinals. Yeah. You know, the Diamondbacks are in good shape. I gotta send all you guys t shirts. <laughs> I get them on the internet. Body parts off one at a time. You got them. Well, how? How much is the SE worth now? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, we didn't build them. Those city fathers in Mesa did not build him a stadium. He's ripped. Them? We didn't either. That's why I left him. Nicholas, you're on camera. Say hi. Nick, hey Nicholas, look at here. Give me a, give me something. Thank you. Can you show everybody how big you are? My name is Nicholas. Do more dishes. <laughs> Do more dishes. Yeah, come on, Nick. Get this one done. Yeah. Is that it? Okay, <laughs> thank you. Now the next one. He's pretty good. Okay, I need this one. Come on. Oh. He's mom's grandma's helper. Hey, Nick. Nicholas. About five minutes. Nick. Nick. Nicholas. Hey. Two placements. Two Irishmen open up that place. Where? It was juvenile office. It's in the 1950s in Belmont Western. They called it the lockup. Was that what the name of it was? Prostitutes in there. Oh, really? Oh, it was a short walk. Canine, you used to go in there with your dog. They used to sit the dog in there and clear out all the bait. He couldn't, he could not ring up that cash register. You know, some places that business sucks. Yeah. I wish they had... Because you're not ringing up half that she, shit that you're... She's all in the Phoenix and No. And yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You could not make change. Yeah.
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, we're going to have the right hand on their shoulder, left hand with the person they had elbows with. And then just turn back the same way. Okay, let's get back into the set. Oh, let's start over. <laughs> okay, sorry. Lack of unanimity. We're going to link left elbows with, with your corner, just like you did in the first figure. You go around twice. Nice. We get to one. Seven, two, three, and eight, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right hand when you practice. Seven, eight. You know when you broke it, you think? Okay, deal. All right, now go all the way around to your starting place in eight, three. Seven, two, three, one. Okay, two. Seven, two, three, again. Eight, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Women just eight. Women just turn to face your partner. Don't go under the arm. Okay. Now you go into waltz position. And you're going to slide in twice, just like you did in the last three. You're only going to do the same move. Sorry, Mina. You're right. Thank you. Uh, should, should be just right hand, not not wall position. This time. But you're still facing your partner. If you don't face them, you can't do the step right. So it's still, let's do it together. Seven, two, three, eight, two, three. Slide together, slide, lift. Back together, slide, flat. Slide together, slide, lift. Back together, slide, flat. Now you take wall position. And you're going to slide in once more. And this time when you come back, instead of doing the slap, do a one, two, three. And the reason is that if you don't do a one, two, three, your weight's going to be on the wrong foot. Okay, because the next thing you're going to do is going to require you to, you know, you know move around a bit more. All right. We'll turn the two, three, get an eight, two, three. Slide together, slide, lift, slide together, one, two, three. Now you all dance halfway around the set, so you end up where the opposite couple is. And so it's actually, at this point, it's three, two, three, four, two, three. Now you take off on five, two, three, six, two, three, seven, two, three, eight, two, three. You should be halfway around. Everything's on eight, eight bars of music, and that's the way every music is. Now you slide in again, facing your partner. Slide together, slide, lift. Slide together, one, two, three, you go halfway back to home. Six, seven, eight. And then you would do the whole thing again. Is there any set that's got problems with this, this point? Okay. You should be back home. I'll say it again. House, link off, form a ring. Go all the way around, slide in twice. With the right hand, slide in once in waltz position, go halfway, slide in again, halfway to home. And then we repeat the whole thing. And then there'll be a final house at the end. Okay? Dan? caught in the rain. We have got to uh, kind of telescope him in. Look at 
Make good use of the rain by washing it down with the water falling. Wave, Dermot. Just wave. You got it. <laughs> Come on down. <laughs> Cleaning off his engine. Chasing everybody out of here. Chicago Convention taking place in a few days. There's a lighthouse entrance to um, Navy Pier. And the boat that's coming into the foreground there has just been chased out of here. There's the police that did it. Well, this is the Chicago skyline looking from the other side of Navy Pier. Here's the John Hancock Sears Tower. And of course, Navy Pier. Now looking north from Navy Pier, you can't see a diddly squat. Now we'll come around and look out over Lake Michigan. And what do we see? My God, it's a Angelo Cibulano's wife. And the Queen and Bonnie and Clyde here. Talking to the camera, mother. Talking to the camera. Tell them what you're doing today. I'm doing very well. It ain't, it ain't what you're doing. You're just sitting there. Observing Lake Michigan. <laughs> That's because the police are chasing them all off. Yeah, the police are chasing them all off. My son, Tommy from Arizona, is taking the picture. He was never here in 40 years. Is that right? <laughs> I've never been here, period. What'd you say? What? She's afraid I'm gonna push her in the water. Now what a thought. Would we think of doing that? <laughs> well, there's the big Ferris wheel. Navy Fair. like a real bad accident. This is what all those fire departments, engines and everything were running for. There's a car underneath all that. We'll have to take a sneak over and see what we can see. I'm gonna pull the rest of that down. Brand 
brand new car, a uh, van, underneath all of that. I think they took the guy away. What the heck happened? They were all be so dramatic. The house of joy. Make something up and pretend now that you're on the news. Come on, Alina. Okay, and this accident is a very serious accident. They took away six people, all of them. They were all in that van. All in that van. That questionable their condition. And they hit that garage door. A few and everything came down on top of it. Tons of bricks. The biggest bricks. What a shock for these people. They're on NBC News. And that's it, folks. You've the, seen the, it. The moral of the story is don't try to go through any garage doors. <laughs> But some of them are, you can go over to Spirit Lake and catch fish all day long. There's not good fish. very good fishing in the chain or where I am unless you're a good fisherman. They get a lot of walleye in the spring, but you can't fish. I got no fishing on my lake. I mean, I got yeah. bullheads and carp and stuff. No, see, so your lake is an entirely different character yeah. than ours. Geese. Ours has a sand bottom. And, um, if you like duck hunting, come over to my lake or you want geese or. Well, you're in a wild red. Well, you're in a red. You've got yeah. a refuge, it's a sure. You better not go hunting. No, they got, they got duck hunting, though. So, yeah, they don't see some of them. Yeah, they got little duck lanes. Yeah. We have a lot of ducks, and we have loons, we have bald eagles. I eat them, shoot them. Oh, you're up in a nice area. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, we have skunks and raccoons and deer and wolves and timber rattlers. <laughs> <laughs> However, you never see them with the people. You got weasels. We got everything. Gophers? So some weasel take a picture right now. <laughs> Would you kindly leave my double it's chins weasel. alone? <laughs> I don't want to see yeah, this. It's a it's Hi, Maggie. It's a well, you got a message for her? Yes, we miss you. We wish you were here. We said nothing but good things about you. And I hope I see you soon. Abby has invited me out to Prescott and my daughter. So we may meet each other. Well, you got to tell her why. Uh, Katie's done. thinking oh, yeah. about going to school out there. Never heard of the college until now. Until now. What's so the name of the college? Prescott College. 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 What? So it's a yeah. small yeah. world we live in. But it's and the one. It's the one just off of Gurley Street, yeah. and um, and Park Avenue, I think it is. Yeah. As um, Maggie and I went by there one day, and we looked on the left. And I says, Prescott College, that must be an antique place. That's the college your daughter is going to. Maybe. For, I, I'm not sure. For forestry or whatever yeah. it is. What is it, forestry? Well, she doesn't know what she wants to do yet. She needs her year to try and figure it out. I figure Maggie would be an excellent influence in her life. She'd have her shaped up in no time. <laughs> right. Nice. Just, just send money, Mary Louise. <laughs> I will. Four hundred a week. You got it. You can <laughs> take have care of everything. <laughs> you can have it. She'll do chores for other people, but not for me. <laughs> so, uh, All right, there we go. I might not have been taking the best of pictures right there. I, oh, that's fine. Hmm? I, if you had it off, I'd be delighted. I don't know what I had it on. I had it on something other than. Well, what I red light is it? Hey, yeah, but I had it on some sort of a ski thing, you know, like oh, maybe it didn't come out. What's your daughter's name again? Katie. Katie, Kathleen. And Kathleen Heather. She's 19? She was 19 July 20th. Yeah. And she's sort of taking a little vacation from school. She's going to take a couple of courses in Montana and figure out what she wants to do with the rest of her life. So she I told her she has a semester to come up with a plan. Now what's Prescott got to do with her leaving Montana? Well, she's going out to Montana mainly because her best friend is there. Yeah. And they were best friends for four years through all this hellish divorce business and everything else. And she was very unhappy in Menominee. She hated that area. And she didn't like the school. And you know, I mean, she made friends there, and she did okay. She knows that they don't have anything to offer that she wants. Yeah. They're known for hotel management and industrial arts. So if it doesn't work out in Montana, she'd be coming to Prescott. 
Well, that's one of the things she's considering. So she wants to go visit and see what it's really like. Which is something she never did before she went to school. I couldn't get her to go look at colleges. She just went up to um, an Amity because the coach begged her to. How the hell did she ever become a vegetarian? Lord knows. Yeah. <laughs> I, my daughter was about fish and patches. Now she's a little hippie child, little flower child. So I just ignore it because they all have gone through this stage and they all come up. We're all going back to the 60s. Yeah. Huh? Yes. So here we are, you know, the convention starts in two days. Right. Maggie's birthday, the 26th, and then the last one until the 29th. Happy birthday, Maggie. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Now let's turn, switch over and see what our narrator, Dermot, is talking about with his first cousin, Terry Larity. Otherwise known as Patrick Larity. Never ever have to to uh, <laughs> take a cut when you retire. You should always be at the same level that you are before you retire. Yeah. Yeah. We got to say to Arizona. And we got TV. You're now on TV. Can I, I smile. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll Say hello to me. Both the Democrats are here. Hi, Baggy. How are you? Good to see you. So you came by our house right and nobody uh, was home. Maggie? For what? The I was at your house and you wouldn't answer the door and I really ticked off at you. Here. <laughs> uh -huh. I will never forget this. I will never forget that. We didn't even know you were coming. By the way, I like your baby suit. So each, each delegate girl. You did see her in the backyard. <laughs> you were in the backyard. <laughs> she does use that bathing suit when she goes in that backyard pool, which is during the summer quite a bit. But anyway, you'll have to come out and play that Gold Canyon course again. But let us know when you're coming. Yes, I will. So we can, uh, I tried calling you, but you didn't want to answer the phone either. Really? Well, it must have been a weekday when she was at work and I was overseas. So I was at Desert Storm or Bosnia or someplace. Depends on how many years ago it was. It was more like two years ago I was in Bosnia. Here we if are. we're going back six was, years ago. It was the 23rd of... More like six? 1990. Yes, six. one year. It's one year. The eve of the... A year ago? National Convention. Huh? Was it a year ago? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. I was here the last time that there was a convention in '68. Yeah, that's good. And Dermot, you were one of those guys at the clubs, right? Dermot was telling me blow by blow because he was working it. Would you, would you, would you work at that? Would you like to buy my helmet? <laughs> what do you think be he has a, a blue helmet. And Does it have a dent in it? He has shit all over the top of it. <laughs> the possibility it could be worth a couple of thousand dollars. They threw nothing but yep. shit on him. And, <laughs> and nobody knows why they get upset. And yeah, bags of pee, closet. huh? You know, it was an amazing fact is. If I took it tomorrow morning down at Buckingham Fountain area and put it on a platform in my star number on there, I guarantee you it could be, it could be brought about $3,000. No kidding. The old blue helmet. Me in 1965. Now we're into the 1968 Democratic Convention. Yeah, that's interesting. <coughs> Do you know that the Republican Convention that same year people were killed, and there's no coverage of that at all. Where at? Where was huh? At the Republican Convention, oh. the same year people died. Where was it held at? It was probably all up there. Do you remember where it was? Detroit? Oh, no, no. It was down south someplace. Oh. Texas, I, I can't remember now. Yeah. But there was no coverage of that. But because this was a riot and because of the political climate and everything else. But people getting killed apparently isn't newsworthy. It was probably all up Nobody was killed. Well. Nobody got killed on this Nobody one. Nobody got killed at the Democratic Convention. That the, the department would find their bodies. <laughs> 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 or if they did, they're all at the bottom of the lake and nobody's visited them anyway. Because <laughs> nobody's seen them in years. <laughs> we, uh, we uh, you know, no, we yeah. want to cover our own dirt. Tell your dad to get out of here and look at all that. Uh-oh. Tear that out of there. What it's underneath. What is it? Come on, Ian. What's in there? Take it out of the bag. Take it out. This is your birthday. Take it out of the bag. You say damn? Yeah. Hey! Yeah. Holy cow, man. That is great, Tiger. <laughs> Let's 
see. What are you doing hiding? Oh, well, we gotta get a little bit bigger size, don't we? Wow. Let's get a little bit bigger size then. Okay. We'll do that. Go we'll check out each other again. Is it bigger he needs? Yeah. Oh, it's small. I thought you said, but I wasn't sure. You go for the easy one. In fact, we can get down that way and do it today. Oh man, look at that, son. That's a good looking shirt. It does. This is like a George Strait shirt. You like that? Man, that's a good looking shirt. It's a cowboy shirt. Yeah, it is. I'm big. Well, they're supposed to be a little bit big, huh? Right. Yeah. Yeah. We got great. you a, one to grow into. Uh huh. See? Now, last. I don't know how you get that out You better help them. <laughs> That's easy, easy. Well, you know. Okay. I want to some more than that. Yeah, check it out. Do you know what that is, Ian? What is that? Candy Oh, okay. Good, you did a good job of packing that one. That's a room bug. Does he know what that is? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Move the box, Maggie, so I can see what... Yeah, you look like George Strait. Now hold your arms out like that. Is the sleeves long enough? Yeah. Yeah? Wow. You can wear that. You can keep up wearing it. Yeah, wear that today. We're going to wear our hats. Yeah, no. But I like to have the sample in the No. Go watch this. Down, Gunner. I like the one that. Oh. What? Get up, please. Can't Sounds like a damn desert. Or did he smoke? Recruits of the class of 329, you are about to repeat words that will change your lives. Right now, you are still Mr. Smith and Miss Jones. In a few moments, each of you will be in. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution and laws of the State of Arizona that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same and defend them against all enemies foreign and domestic that I will faithfully and impartially discharge Go, Jim. I'm very. My back's hurt. Come oh, on. No. Oh, yeah, we've heard them all. He was bouncing around without trying. There's a lot, there's, uh, things are a lot closer together than they used to. They used to be so far apart, you know, I used to get caught in them. That might even be good for your back, Jim. <laughs> yeah, watch him come down, you You'll be on industrial <laughs> for the next six months. Oh, that hurts. Take a disability, Jim. What'd you do to your back? Yeah. I was carrying Ian. And I went to sit down and I just felt a pull. This morning. Well, actually, on the other day, I thought I was going to go. I did it last week. Well, you can submit. Is that our pager? Yeah, let me have it. It's probably that man right in front of you. I got to put it on the bike right Hey, Rory, you want to have a beer? Who is it? Papa soda. Cody, you guys want some drink? That's not all right. Can I get a soda? I think I'll be 